I'm with uh, Mercedes Erfanian, who is an auditory neuroscientist uh, at University College of London. And uh, Mercedes, thank you very much for joining me. I understand that you, uh, you will be presenting at the sixth international conference on hyperacusis and misophonia, 1st and 2nd of July at Birkbeck College, University of London. So tell us a little bit about what is it that you will be talking in the conference? Yeah, sure. Yeah, thank you for having me. Um, basically, what I would like to be talking about at the conference is the results of our uh, paper that we published back in 2021. And that was a collaboration of several universities of um, University of College London, where I'm based at, and also uh, the University of Newcastle and uh, University, University of Iowa. And uh, this was basically the continuation of Sukhbinder Kumar's work that was published back in 2017. And in his first work, he found that there were several uh, brain regions that were involved in um, a pathology or, or brain basis of misophonia. And one of them, and the most important one, was anterior insular cortex that is first a hub of saliency. It means it would perceive different stimuli that um, would stick out or stand out of background. Like you are in an acoustic environment and everything is so dynamic. Imagine you're in Camden Town and all of a sudden an ambulance passes by. The ambulance is loud with a specific frequency that would attract your attention. This is called saliency, which anterior insular cortex is involved in processing or perception of saliency and also it is responsible for emotional processing or emotion processing and it is responsible for perception of interceptive signals which means that the more active this part of the brain is the more aware or perceptive we are from the change that happens in our body so um the, the, the next thing that they found, or the, the, the further result, um, showed that not only anterior insular cortex was involved and overactivated with uh, or opened exposure to misophonic triggers, but also it was overconnected, which is not normal and which was not found in control group. It was overconnected with several parts of the brain, like hippocampus, amygdala. Uh, um, posterior medial cortex and also ventromedial prefrontal cortex. And these parts of the brain normally should not be connected. So when anterior insular cortex st starts, for example, lighting up, it would send wrong signals to all these parts of the brain. That's why when, for example, the person or the sufferer is exposed to uh, sound triggers, they get angry or they get irritated is because of that overconnection with amygdala. So, so this is the area that needs to be activated when you hear certain sounds, but it doesn't have to alert other parts of brain, um, but it does that in people with misophonia. And you have evidence uh, of that by looking at the past research. That is correct. Yes, that is correct. Like compare me, that does not have misophonia, do not have misophonia with somebody that has misophonia. If I hear somebody chewing, my, since my amygdala is not overconnected to anterior insular cortex, I won't get bothered by hearing those or lessening those sounds. But since those two regions, for example, or hippocampus is uh, overconnected to anterior insular cortex, they, uh, for example, fight and flight uh, sets off or they start uh, experiencing the increased physiological, let's say, responses and all those behavioral and emotional symptoms that we know about misophonia is because of this brain um, abnormalities. And you will be in the conference, you will be reviewing several different studies on the same sort of line of the imaging and physiological, if you like. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. So, um, unfortunately, there are, um, uh, I mean, I mean, uh, the, the brain basis of misophonia is still in its uh, infancy. We are still trying to understand what else is happening in the brain of misophonic people. 
but there are a handful of um, let's say groups like um, uh, Medical Center of Amsterdam and University of Newcastle and University of uh, California, San Diego, I, I think, uh, have done like five or six studies together. <clears throat> the first study was done by Miriam Edelstein back in 2013, and she looked at um, the physiological correlates of misophonia. And they found, for example, open the exposure to misophonic triggers um, sufferers electrodermal activity increased, which is normally um, measured by skin conductance response, which was later also quantified by Kumar and his colleagues, uh, plus the uh, brain imaging that they did. Um, and also three or four works, three works, I believe, by University of Amsterdam, uh, which was leading by um, uh, Professor Domian Denis. Uh, who was who actually supervised uh, the whole um, uh, project? And the first two projects were done by Arjan Schroeder, the psychiatrist, and he looked at um, electrophysiology, or I would say neurophysiology, correlates of misophonia. And they found that, for example, um, misophonic people that they that do oddball task, which is a task of listening to. Uh, basically a sequence of um, tones, and there is a deviant tone, which is like beep, 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 beep. It, it, when they listen to these deviant tones, in comparison with healthy people, they show a different, different response. And there are different components to um, uh, event-related potentials, which are the potentials of EEG or electrodermal activity. And it seemed that it was abnormal in uh, in brain of misophonic people in response to uh, sound triggers. I'm gonna then uh, be talking about the brain imaging they did back in 2019 in two new studies by uh, Eisker, I believe. Um, Nadine Eisker, uh, that is a PhD student in the University of Amsterdam. I'll be talking about them. And um, yeah, these are the only basically works that we have about so this you're, point. Uh, so you, you are a keynote speaker in, in the conference and the session of the uh, mechanism of misophonia and hyperacusis. So it is good that your, your plan is to basically put everything in the context and creating this background of the information for other speakers on the same session. They are talking about other tests as they have done for uh, understanding the mechanism of misophonia as well as hyperacusis. So I think it's very good. Uh, I, I'm looking forward to listen to your talk and learn from you and sure. the session that you will be presenting. Sure, and one more thing, uh, which is which is I think the most important one, I'm gonna be also talking about our new study that came out in 2021. I'm not gonna spoil, I'm not gonna tell uh, tell the audience what I'm what, what the, the results is like, but uh, perhaps it's a good opportunity for, for all of us to discuss it at the conference. Fantastic. Yes. So something new that hot off the press, always interesting to uh, to have in this sort of uh, event. So I look forward to welcoming you to uh, to London on the press. You you could be in London yourself, but yeah. uh, in, in, in the conference. And uh, thank you very much for your time. You're very welcome. See you then and there. Thank you.